once we've got the information and the knowledge we need about finding error in perimeter, we can start to reason with that information. Now when I'm teaching the children about this, I really try to get across to them that whenever they look at one of these problems, they've got to get all the information, think about what it's showing them. The clues are there, there's breadcrumbs laid out by the question, they've just got to follow those breadcrumbs to find the answer. So here it says, Lara has some identical rectangles. Every bit of information in the question is there, to make, is important for us to think about. They're identical, they're all the same. They are seven centimetres long and two centimetres wide. And this picture isn't to size, so we can't just measure it. She uses five of her rectangles to make a large rectangle below. Children struggle with this because they haven't realised that that's been rotated round to make this one underneath. Okay. Once they do look at that and really think about it, the problem itself is quite straightforward. The first question, asks them the perimeter. The second question is finding the area. So if we just look, we know that it's two centimetres across here and seven centimetres across here. So what would be really useful is to write on that we've got two, add two, add two, add two, add two. Five twos means that that length there is 10 centimetres. We already know this bit here is 7, so now we can quickly calculate the perimeter by doing 10 for this side here and 10 for this side here. That adds together to make 20, and then 7 for this side and 7 for this side. That adds together to make 14, so the perimeter would be 34 centimetres. To find the area, we know that all we've got to do is 10 times 7, to, and that would give us the answer of 70 centimetres. So although at first sight it looks like quite a complex problem, actually it's fairly straightforward. And down here we might just change the unit of measure to be the correct one. The next problem we can reason about is this one here. Again, this is about a rectangle and it's given you the information, but they've changed the orientation of the rectangle. So they really want you to think about what you're seeing. It's three centimetres tall and eight centimetres wide. And what we have to do for this problem, if I just show you at the bottom, is work out the perimeter of Alfie's shape. Now we can't measure it because it's not the actual size. So we need to think about the information we're given and add that to our diagram. Okay, let me just get that right. So I know this bit here is three centimetres because it shows me there. It's just been rotated round. And I know this bit will be. As for the length down at the bottom here, I know that that's going to be eight, add three, add three. Now I should be able to calculate that mentally. That's 14 centimetres. These two sides, that's easy. That one's eight, and that one's eight. This length here, that's easy, that's also 8. So all I've got to do is work out this bit here and this bit here. Okay. Now if I think about it, this bit here is 3. All together, that would be 8. So if I take 8 away from 3, these little bits here must both be 5. Now once children have done all that complex maths, they then just have to add that up to find the perimeter. And this is normally where they go wrong. So what's a good idea is to tick off each one as you add them up. I'm going to use a mixture of written methods and mental addition. So first of all, 5 add 5 is 10. 3 add 3 is 6. 10 add 6 is 16. So I've got that that far. I've ticked off the ones I've added already. Okay, I'll put that over here in red. I've got 8. 8 and 8, 8, 16, 24. I can calculate that mentally. So tick those three eights off to show I've added them. And then finally, don't forget this long length down at the bottom here. Okay, adding three numbers isn't a problem for me to do. 6 add 4 add 4 makes 14. 10 add 20 add 10 add 10 is 50. So the overall perimeter of this shape is 54 centimetres.